You're watching the 700 Club. It's getting closer and closer to Christmas. We've just had a nice Thanksgiving weekend. And uh, I want to tell you, years ago when I was in college, we studied uh, about a Russian fellow named Mendel. And uh, the Mendelian law was pretty much fixed. And the idea was that if you had a certain genetic uh, structure, that that was fixed all your life. So you, you, you had those genes, and that's what you had, and that was the way it was. Now, scientists have come up with something that they call not genetics, but epigenetics. And it's an exciting new field. It's cutting-edge medicine. It's a field that science have only been studying for the last five or ten years. And one of their key discoveries is that you and I can turn certain genes on and we can turn certain genes off. And what's more, these changes can actually be passed down, just like the Bible says, through generations, which is something mentioned in the Bible. Here's Laurie Johnson with the story of epigenetics. Like millions of Americans, Ashley Skidmore joined the trend of taking at-home DNA tests. All of my friends were doing just the ancestry test, and I just decided on a whim to throw in the health section. The results indicated Ashley inherited a gene that often leads to lung disease. I took the results to my doctor, and my doctor was very alarmed by the results, and I had no idea what it even was. The good news, thanks to the new science of epigenetics, there's hope for Ashley and others. DNA is not our destiny, because even if we inherited some genes we'd rather not have, epigenetics tells us we can turn them off. In his book, Change Your Genes, Change Your Life, Dr. Kenneth Pelletier says we control our genes, not the other way around. Uh, how we live our lives and how we influence the expression of our genes, that's what's critical. So it gives us the responsibility and gives us the, the power to influence our life direction. He says bad genes are activated by bad behavior. In Ashley's case, smoking turns on her problem gene. That's what makes the gene express itself. But if you know you have it, then you can not smoke and you'll avoid the consequences. It gives me hope that I can silence it. But if I were a smoker, it's basically um, my life expectancy is 50 years old. Epi means on top of. Our epigenome is like flexible software on top of our genome, which is like fixed hardware. Our behavior controls the epigenome, which in turn controls the genes. We are, in effect, a programmable computer. That's how we were made. Equally fascinating, researcher Dr. Randy Jertle proved epigenetic changes don't just stop with us. For better or worse, these gene manipulators can actually be passed down to future generations, backing up the biblical warning written thousands of years ago. You can see that, in effect, what God, I think, was telling us is that since they're not totally erased necessarily from generation to generation as they go through the egg and the sperm, can literally give rise to problems in the next generation, in the following, in the following out the four and five generations. When Dr. Jertle fed healthy nutrients to pregnant mice, which carried a gene for obesity and jaundice, her offspring were born thin and brown. There are these transgenerational changes that take place. Dr. Pelletier believes similar scenarios play out in human beings. So the good news, if you make, if you make a healthy change, it'll be transmitted through your generations. If you make an unhealthy change, it will also influence subsequent generations. I mean, this is a whole fascinating new uh, technology. So while we can't control the genetic hand we're dealt, the new science of epigenetics tells us we can control how these genes behave in ourselves and our offspring.